day one of uh, the tournament had three major stories so i'll bring uh, the stories to you one by one first in the first story of the day samartha does his mothered mate on his opponent sonic believer so let me take you to that position i'll i'll take you from this position and uh, then we'll see how he actually got the smothered mate to those who do not know smothered mate it is a beautiful pattern that many of us learn uh, but we never get to use it in our games it comes in the background in calculation but it never happens on the board samartha got a chance to execute it in today's game against sonic believer and let's see how he did it in this position after pawn e5 samartha played queen d5 asking for an exchange of queens so sonic believer said no he went back but this allows knight b5 and now the queen has to go further back b8 or d8 and then comes bishop c4 so underdeveloped pieces have come to haunt sonic believer he has taken too many moves to move other things and he has forgotten to develop his pieces so all of them are sitting on the last rank white's three pieces are very dangerous so in this position uh black pawn is attacked and of course you cannot defend it there are no pieces to defend it there's only a knight to come to h6 that's what he did uh, after the check so basically here in this position if you play knight h6 samartha will happily take it right and then it's check and position will be collapsing very soon so before that he gives a check trying to get his knight out in castle fast he sacrifices a piece but still there is no respite for black bishop takes and he castles so he has given up two pieces and at least got a safe king but it's not enough samartha just brings the bishop back he attacks the knight samartha moves it to d6 a great square for the knight pawn b5 bishop b3 i would have considered knight takes f7 here it's safe and if pawn takes then things happen anyway bishop b3 he saves the bishop king moves and now comes the major moment knight f7 check of course he can give up the rook and uh, save the game but he did not see the checkmate coming he played king g8 now there is no saving black it's a mate in three moves you can see that this queen is doing an extra on the king so when knight moves check it's a double check king moves and now comes the beautiful queen g8 of course king cannot take so rook takes knight f7 checkmate this is a beautiful smothered mate that we see in many textbooks and today we saw it in one of the games now in second story of the day was in the third round of uh, the tournament today's last round there was a very interesting pairing vaishnavi and ahan who were the top seeds were paired against two upcoming stars ambi and aspi there is a 400 point rating difference between them uh, between vaishnavi ambi and ahan asmi and uh, the, the upcoming stars gave a good fight but the old guard showed a few lessons so it was like a scolding to the young stars from the experienced players so i'll show you both the games both of them are very interesting one is a queen pawn one is a king's pawn so vaishnavi was black i mean white against ambi she plays d4 d5 c4 pawn takes so basically she has played the queen's gambit and ambi takes the pawn so you would know that taking it is not really the best option because if you take it you are giving the sender to your opponent and vaishnavi takes the sender and she takes back the pawn and if black tries to hold on to the pawn it's never a good idea if you try doing this then black's position will collapse you will play a4 You play a six and pawn takes pawn takes and rook is gone. So you cannot hold on to the pawn. So Ambi correctly gives the pawn up, but then White's position is good because White has more control of the sender. Vaishnavi plays. I mean Ambi plays bishop check, knight blocks, knight out, knight out, knight out, castles, castles, pawn a three, bishop a five, pawn d five. So here Vaishnavi makes the first advance from the opening. so she is getting more space in the center she is causing some problems for the black pieces bishop takes knight pawn takes back pawn takes pawn takes knight moves to a5 the bishop goes all the way to a2 because it needs to keep defending this pawn it's attacked twice defended twice now c4 can come and the, these two pawns can be a good uh, structure in the middle of the board 
bishop g5 vaishnavi improves uh, develops a bishop and pins ambi's knight ambi challenges the bishop right away she puts it back queen d7 moving out of the pin and don't think that this bishop is blocked by the queen because ambi wants to put the bishop here or here so she has no plans on this diagonal that's why she puts a queen on d7 which is fine rook e1 threatening the knight again now knight f5 here vaishnavi vaishnavi plays a nice move normal people would play like regular like if your rating is lower than 1500 to 1400 and all you would consider moving the bishop right you might want to keep the bishop so maybe bishop here would make sense because if you allow this the knight goes out of play you may play something like uh, c4 or bishop g3 but then she plays knight e5 of course black cannot take the bishop bishop was hanging but so is the queen queen moves to b5 and now vaishnavi plays c4 attacking the queen again queen goes again back so she has pushed the black queen further back now comes queen h5 knight takes queen takes so if you see white pieces are little bit uh, menacing they are showing some so form of coordination and these pawns are also good black pieces are slightly out of place and these two rooks are still not developed and the these two pieces are giving some problems to the king like king there could be problems with the king later right so it's not comfortable for black now ambi plays b5 vaishnavi happily pushes a pawn forward now she has the option to play d6 at some point queen f6 ambi asks for an exchange of queens vaishnavi could go for it but she finds a better move she plays queen b4 hitting the knight and the pawn basically she is getting a pawn ambi attacks this knight instead of saving this guy so vaishnavi takes this knight ambi takes this knight now vaishnavi takes a c7 pawn because c7 pawn if you take it then d6 is passed so it's easier for white to play and win right instead of taking on b5 rook takes rook takes bishop f5 or d6 king h7 queen f7 taking another pawn queen d4 queen takes bishop so bishop is gone now king goes back queen d4 asking for another exchange ambi again refuses but rook is hanging king moves bishop check you can see the finish beautiful finish queen blocks rook takes queen takes pawn check king moves and queen f e7 checkmate that was that was some um like heavy stuff towards the end like fire finish towards the end so this is how vaishnavi defeated ambi in the third round let's see how ahan played against asmi so ahan was white and he played e4 e5 knight out knight out bishop c4 h6 so this is the anti fried low system for black where they play h6 too early i don't like the system because it it's not developing any piece and it's just stopping bishop g5 which is not really a problem here it's better to just play knight f6 allowing the fried liver attack or even bishop c5 going for the no, normal giko piano lines h6 d4 pawn takes knight takes queen f6 knight takes here asmi should have taken back with the pawn obviously because the bishop will move out right but she takes the queen which is a mistake because she has not developed the pieces properly yet but she is also attacking the bishop so ahan moves the bishop back bishop c5 knight c3 queen f6 castles d6 knight d5 queen goes back bishop e3 bishop takes pawn takes now you can see that white pieces are little more active than blacks and blacking is still in the middle so this must be a good position for asmi ahan i mean sorry yeah this must be a good position for ahan sorry so asmi plays knight e7 knight takes queen takes queen f3 black can actually just castle here right it's not a bad idea to idea to just castle but asmi goes for bishop e6 and after b3 she castles long generally castling short is a much safer op option in most positions you can castle long in some positions uh, it it's safe maybe it's even safer sometimes but here it's definitely not safer than this side here it's easy for white to attack black has no pieces on this side here at least there are some pieces to protect the king and white king is also here so white cannot push pawns but this side white can just push pawns and attack generally when you castle opposite sides whoever attacks first wins so let's see what happened ahan starts his pawn pawn storm 
rook f8, pawn a5, pawn a6, stopping it. Now b4 comes. She, he wants to play b5. She stops it. Now c4 comes. So he is getting b5 no matter what. Now g6. So black is trying to play f5. But before that, queen moves out of the way. h5, but this is too late. Too slow and too late. White's pawn storm is faster than black's. Which means white will get to that king before black gets to this king. This king will be safe. And that means white will win. Pawn takes, pawn takes, pawn takes. Uh, pawn takes and king is even more open. So he plays, she plays king c7. Now rook c1. Rook a8. Queen c2. Putting more and more pressure on c6. Pawn c5. Closing out this file. But b6. King moves. Pawn a6. That's a wonderful move by... Uh -huh. He breaks through. Pawn takes. Rook takes. Rook, queen b7. Now rook a1. So the pieces are invading through the, uh, through the a file. Rook takes. Rook takes. Rook e8 and queen a4. Now there are all sorts of threats. Uh, rook a7, rook a8. Everything is coming. Bishop c8. Queen a5. That's a wonderful move by by a hand. Because now when the queen moves, like after rook a7 and queen moves, there is b7 check. So here I would have played rook. I mean, I wouldn't play rook a7, but I would consider rook a7 actually. It might not be good. So he first defends a b6 pawn with queen a5. Now rook, rook e7. Like hoping for the king to get some safety here. Which is what she should have done in the beginning by castling short. But now rook a7 comes. Queen moves and you can find the winning move. Right? It's about this discovered attack. How do you do it? Just push the pawn and the bishop is gone. Rook will not be able to take the rook because when king moves, it will also be a check. Like blocks. Pawn takes bishop. Queens. Check. Queen takes. Rook a8. Now queens also go. Queen takes. Queen takes. Rook c8. Queen d5. Bishop check. Queen takes. Bishop check. Bishop there. Queen takes. He's just cleaning up the board. And now bishop takes. Queen defends it. And here Asmi had, had enough. So she resigned. Now comes the third story of the day, which was Siddharvin. Siddharth. Siddharth hasn't had such a great first day ever in, uh, in past tournaments. But today he had three out of three. And he played some really good matches. One was against Yatin, second round. Third one was against Ruthwick. Let me show you the game quickly. So Siddharth was white. We have Queen's Gambit. So many, many players are taking Queen's Gambit as the main opening these days, which is good to see. Knight out, bishop b4, queen b3, bishop d2, takes, takes, knight, pawn, castle, bishop, pawn takes, bishop takes, knight, bishop b3, takes, 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 queen c2, g6, knight out, castles, bishop d4, bishop e2, rook d8, rook d1, queen f6, takes, takes, takes. So we have mass exchange of pieces and we reach this pawn end game. Now, this pawn end game can be good for white because of black's doubled pawns. So, white immediately runs to the pawn side, to the side of pawns. But here, black is just in time. He reaches just in time. So, white can just consolidate. He can play a4. Yeah, he does that. Now, he can also block this side and win the game. Like in this position, engine would say play f4. Don't allow black to do anything. Once you stop any pawn moves on this side, once this side, this side is blocked, black will have to move the king. And then your king will come forward. So that's a winning plan for white. Siddharth plays b5, pawn takes, pawn takes. He helps black actually, removing those double pawns. So he, he should have done better. King d5. This is a mistake by black, somewhat. Is it? If white takes, will he be in time? It doesn't look like it. I'm not sure. King comes here. Will black be winning? Comes here, takes. Thanks. Mm, looks like black will be just in time again. Wait. Here black has to do something better. Like, I mean white. Wow, white is about to lose the pawns. So this is a scary line for white actually. Even if you get that pawn, you are going to lose these pawns. So it is risky. So Siddha so didn't go for that. He played a uh, Takes, 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 takes. King comes back. King moves back. 
f4, pawn takes, king takes, and king d2. Pawn forward, king d e2. Check, check, king moves here. And here comes a very important moment. Siddharth plays f4, pawn takes, pawn takes. Here it's still equal. Because when black comes here, white will also come up. Black has a pass pawn, white has a pass pawn. That's the situation. But here the, the brain fade moment for Ethan. Either he did not think for long or he just just did not think of calculating properly. He thought this pawn would promote first or something. But he took the pawn, which is a big blunder. Now white just promotes. Black is in no position to promote his pawn. Queen check, king is pushed back. There's no stalemate because there's a pawn here. Now he gives a check and check. This is how Siddharth won the game against Yatin. And in the last round, he was playing Ruthwick. And uh, here he plays a quiet opening. And the main moment comes somewhere around. We have some exchanges. Now queen c8. So he is aiming for this bishop takes pawn sack. Bishop takes pawn takes queen b3. Castles, queen d1. And here he plays bishop takes x3. If Ruthwick takes in queen h3 and the knight g4, the position can become risky for white. There are no pieces here. If there was a knight here, it would have been okay somewhat. But otherwise, it's risky. So, Ruthwick does not take that bishop. He plays queen f3, giving a pawn up for uh, Siddharth. Bishop goes back, queen goes, knight here, queen h4, g5, queen goes back, king h7. You can see some good moves by Siddharth, all logical moves. Even though he's opened the king, he has played king h7 and tucked the king away. Knight g3. So, under pressure, Ruthwick collapses. He plays f3. Knight g3. And it's a fork. Rook is gone. So he's an exchanger. And from here, it should be an easy conversion. If you play just normal moves. He plays some good moves. He's basically putting pressure on the f3 pawn. c6. And goes back. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. d5. Bishop takes. Bishop. Pawn d5. Rook h3 defending it again. Pawn takes, bishop takes. Here, uh, you want to play bishop d5, but you don't have enough support. So, a good idea would be to play rook e1, rook e8, sorry, or d5, and then play bishop d5. But Siddharth makes a blunder. He plays rook a4 first, pawn c4, pawn takes. And here, instead of play, defending the, he plays, uh, white plays rook g3. Here, instead of defending the bishop and then playing bishop d5, he directly plays bishop d5. That's a blunder by Siddharth because it's a free piece. Still, the white king is not safe, but even black king is not safe. And material is equal now. Almost. Just two pawns up. King h8, king g2, b5, queen takes pawn. Rook a5, knight takes pawn. Rook takes pawn, queen takes e4. Rook takes check. King moves to h3. Now comes the very important. Now, basically, after rook takes pawn, the bishop is gone. But then, so is the rook. Even the black rook is gone. So this is now a crazy position. Both engine says it's equal. Uh, but uh, basically, material-wise, white is an exchange down. Sorry. Uh, yeah, white is, an, white is an exchange down. Yeah, yeah queen check. In this position, black is two pawns. And uh, white is a piece up. White is a piece up. But he's down two pawns. He, this is the most crucial moment of the game. Ruthwick should have just gone back here. After this, what would happen is rook takes index, and this would be a draw by repetition. The queen will keep giving checks. It won't be possible to get out of the checks. Even if you block, it would there would still be checks, and you cannot get out of the checks. So this would be a draw. But instead, he played in this position after queen check. Ruthwick plays the mistake of getting his king to the King out in the middle. And then it's a maiden 2. Can you see the finish? Rook check. And queen takes pawn. Rook checkmate. So that's the third story of the day. Ruthwick ends the day well with two good victories over higher rated opponents.